Finally, let's discuss heavy metal exposure. The only source of heavy metals for pre-industrial men and women would have been their drinking water. Unfiltered well and river water could have small amounts of lead, mercury, arsenic, and other metals in it, but rarely in amounts high enough to be of concern in most locations. We, on the other hand, are continually exposed to heavy metals in unprecedented amounts. It is estimated that we will eat one-third of a teaspoon of mercury, one teaspoon of arsenic, one teaspoon of lead, one teaspoon of nickel, and over three pounds of aluminum in our lifetime. There is no way that our glutathione detoxification system can hope to keep up with this level of exposure, let alone deal with all the other types of toxins we have discussed. What we need to do is to find a way to support our overwhelmed glutathione detoxification pathway so it can get these toxins out of our bodies. To support the glutathione detoxification pathway in our bodies, we have to do two things. We have to increase the amount of glutathione in our bodies, and we also have to increase the levels of glutathione S-transferase, the enzyme that the glutathione works with. Let's look at increasing the glutathione first. Glutathione is a tripeptide protein and is made up of the amino acids cysteine, glutamic acid, and glycine. It is made in every cell in the body, and in addition to its job in detoxification, it is one of the body's most important antioxidants. Because of its tripeptide structure, oral supplementation of glutathione just doesn't work. When taken orally, glutathione is simply digested, into its original amino acid building blocks, just as any other protein would be. This is precisely why the glutathione given in a hospital emergency room for acute poisonings is given intravenously. Glutathione simply can't make it through the digestion process intact. Another method to increase glutathione is to take additional cysteine, glycine, and glutamic acids, but there is no guarantee that they will make glutathione since there are many other uses for these amino acids that compete with glutathione production for their use. Fortunately, there is another option. Glutathione can also be given by suppository. Since there are no digestive enzymes or acids in the colon to break the glutathione down, administered rectally, glutathione enters the body fully intact. Taking intravenous glutathione is invasive, time-consuming, and requires a medical professional to administer. Glutathione suppositories can be easily taken at home by anyone. Okay, that takes care of glutathione. The second thing we need to do is increase glutathione's enzyme cofactor, glutathione S-transferase. It's the glutathione S-transferase that actually attaches the glutathione to the toxins. Without this enzyme, the glutathione simply won't work. So, we know how to increase glutathione. The question that remains is, how can we increase the glutathione S-transferase? The answer, surprisingly, is coffee. Everyone knows of the ability of coffee to keep us awake when we're tired, but it is also a great detoxifier. But here's the catch. It has to be taken as a suppository. Drinking the coffee won't have the same effect. This is because when coffee is taken rectally, it goes right to the liver, where it has an entirely different effect than when you drink it. Orally administered, coffee is a stimulant, but only a mild detoxifier. Rectally administered, coffee is a relaxant and a powerful detoxifier. The first recorded application of rectally administered coffee was in a German army hospital in World War I, where its healing effects were discovered quite by chance. Patients are often given enemas to empty their intestines before surgery, and in one case, a German nurse, unable to find any other warm liquid to use, gave enemas to some soldiers with coffee instead of plain water. The patients who received the improvised coffee enemas 
reported an immediate decrease in pain. Later, these same patients demonstrated faster recoveries from their wounds and surgeries than their compatriots who received the standard warm water enemas. The coffee enema quickly gained popularity with surgeons and medical clinics around the world as a method of both cleansing the liver and rejuvenating the body. Today, coffee enemas are commonly administered in alternative cancer clinics, both as a means of detoxification as well as a general rejuvenator to the body. While many of the younger doctors have not heard of the benefits of coffee enemas, favoring drugs instead of natural remedies, many of the older doctors swear by them. Fortunately, we don't have to take an enema to get this special benefit of coffee. Similar to glutathione, coffee can also be administered as a suppository. The advantage of using coffee in suppository form is that it is faster and more convenient and does not wash away electrolytes or impose an additional fluid load on the heart and kidneys like an enema will. To this end, we have created Xenoplex suppositories. Xenoplex suppositories contain both glutathione as well as organic coffee extract. The glutathione in Xenoplex is delivered intact right to the body and the coffee extract helps raise the glutathione S transferase levels at the same time. Using these two ingredients together you can literally supercharge your body's detoxification system. Our body has the ability to detoxify itself provided we support it properly. Yes, we live in toxic times, but we don't have to live in toxic bodies. <music>